Hi friends, Jen here with Serenity Hill Farmstead. Today I'm gonna to be talking about making tinctures, but not just about making tinctures, making tinctures that help your digestive system. Now there's a lot of different herbs that affect the digestive system that can help support all different parts of it. Your digestive system is the second largest system in your body, starts at your mouth and goes all the way through the other end. And we're gonna talk about some herbs today. I've got four tinctures that I'm gonna to make today. And that is by no means every herb that you could use for your digestive system. I tried to pick some herbs that would represent kind of different areas. They cross a little bit as they all do. Um, and I wanna say that not all herbs work the best for everybody. So one of these herbs that I'm talking about, you may have tried or you may be interested in trying, that wouldn't help you specifically with what you want. You may have to try different herbs and this is just kind of the way herbalism works. So the herbs that I'm gonna work on today, I'm actually picking these four herbs because I am going to be making a blend. Now, I don't necessarily believe in making a blend to tincture. So what I mean by that is I would not mix, it's moving back here so you guys can see them a little better. I would not take a mixture of all of these herbs and then tincture it as a single bottle. And now a couple reasons why. If you notice here, they're kind of all different amounts. So this one, dandelion root has the most because uh, I write everything on the top here because the ratio for making a dandelion root tincture is one part dried herb, we're using dried herbs today, so one part dried herb to two parts vodka, which if I came all the way down here to the catnip, dried cat catnip is one part herb to five parts vodka. So I wouldn't necessarily want to mix these two because they require different ratios. And all herbs are like that. There's a lot of herbs that actually do have the same ratios, like lemon balm here and catnip here. These are both a one to five ratio, one part dried herb to five parts alcohol. But I'm still not going to tincture them together because if I do this and I have a blended tincture, then all I can ever use this for is a catnip lemon balm tincture. I can't take part of this catnip and mix it with the, my milk thistle or part of it and mix it with my dandelion. And if I'm working with a person that maybe has a sensitivity to lemon balm or has a sensitivity to catnip, then I have to start completely from scratch and make single herb tinctures. So when I'm doing tinctures, I always stick to single herb tinctures. And then if you wanna blend tinctures together afterwards, you still have to play with ratios and things like that, but it is much easier to do uh, when you already have them prepared. So the alcohol I'm gonna be using is vodka. This is a 40% alcohol or 80 proof. And we are going to be adding this. This is adequate for all of these. So I am going to start with this little one that I have left here. So like I said, everything has its own um, ratio. So we're gonna start here with the catnip. And as I am pouring this, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about each one of these herbs. And I took my notes here because otherwise I would have mixed things up and forgotten things because that's just how my brain works. So catnip is really, really good for settling the stomach. This is a great herb to use if you have stress reactive irritable bowel syndrome, or if you are someone that gets like really upset stomach when you're nervous, or you get diarrhea when you're nervous, you can't eat when you're nervous. If you are one of those people, catnip would might be a really good herb for you. So catnip is really good for indigestion. It helps settle the stomach and it helps with spasms in the stomach. Like if you're having cramping in your stomach for whatever reason, especially in your lower digestive tract, in your intestines, it is a really good gastrointestinal, what we call anti-spasmodic. Whoops, now I'm spilling vodka. That's never good. So I always fill these up all the way up to the top so that the lid, when it goes on, it submerges all of the herb into your vodka here. So I forgot my rings, so I'm gonna go get some rings and then we're gonna go ahead and shake this up. So catnip is one. That one's done. I always like to really put it in there, really like crank it on. It's still good all the way to the top. And there is, I, I love this part. Shake it up and watch it spin. It's like a really good adult sensory toy. 
Okay, the next one I'm gonna do now is lemon balm. And lemon balm has um, an astringent, a real mild astringent property to it. And this one, the ratio for lemon balm again is one to five. And the astringent property in herbs uh, helps to dry, uh, but it also helps to kind of knit those damaged tissues together. So an herb that we recently talked about that has that astringent property is plantain. And if you haven't seen that video, I will go ahead and link that in the description box below. Whoop. I went ahead and got herb on the bottle. Okay. I'll go ahead and do that. So um, I talked about how plantain for the wildfire smoke that's affecting so many people in the States right now and in parts of Canada, um, it helps with all of the damage from breathing in that wildfire smoke, all that particulate in the air. And it puts like little microscopic cuts in, um, and things, it's fly season guys, <laughs> in your upper airway. And what an astringent herb will do is help kind of pull all of that back together and assist with the healing process. So lemon balm kind of does a milder uh, form of that in your gastrointestinal tract. It is also really good for calming a nervous stomach and it is a carminative. So a carminative herb is something that helps expel gas and calm bloating. So if you also um, have a type of stomach that you get real bloated when you get nervous uh, and you, or you get real gassy, lemon balm could be a good help to you too. Get the sensory fill here. <laughs> All the pretty herbs spinning around in the vodka. It really is my favorite part. It is, I love it. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna talk about is milk thistle. And milk thistle is actually one of the herbs I talk about in my herbal gut course. And I went ahead and printed out the printable so you could see what one of the printables looks like. And I know you can't see all the information on that, but this is just one of the printables. And each one of the herbs that I talk about has these printables for you. But it talks about the hardiness zones, how to grow it, the medicinal uses. Uh, and then it talks about the types of medicine you can use, how to make that medicine. So there's all that information on every herb that I talk about in my herbal gut course. In that course, I talk about everything that has to do with the gut. I talk about it from head to toe, your full anatomy, how everything is laid together, how everything works together, what happens when things are not working correctly, how to fix them, how things may appear when they're damaged in children and how to work with that. And all of the herbs that I've talked about here today are in it and way more. And there's also a module in there about making your own specific herbal protocols for you, how to make the medicine, how to fit them together, how to work around the herbs and find the right ones that are right for you. So if that is something that you're interested in, the link is down in the description box below. And I also have a 20% off discount code just for you guys here on YouTube. So if it's something that you're interested in doing, you can go ahead and click that link below. You can put the discount code in at checkout and you will have that course once you purchase it, it is yours for the life of it. Any kind of additions or changes or updates, upgrades that I make to it along the way, you get those automatically for free. And all of my printables in there, there's several printables in there. You can print them out or you can just save them to your computer if you're not a printed out kind of person. Um, and there's several videos that get really in depth and do show how to's and all of that. So it's a great course. I'm not just being biased. <laughs> I've had a lot of great feedback on it. Um, and it's helped a lot of people. So I hope that you give that a shot and check it out as well. So, okay, let's get back into milk thistle. So medicinal uses for milk thistle. This is a fantastic protectant for your liver. So I am doing this one specifically for myself. Uh, taking the medications that I take for my autoimmune disease are very, very damaging to the liver. I take Humira and I take hydroxychloroquine and I am on high dose prednisone, and I am a person that is very hard to get off prednisone. Uh, that my rheumatologist tells me that certain people just can't ever get off of it because the second it is out of their body, it's like their body forgets, <laughs> wait a minute, we're not supposed to swell up and be all crazy and, and start trying to damage our, our bodies, our tissues. Uh, so I am one of those people. So getting off prednisone for me is a process. And I have really had to use herbal, a lot of herbal remedies um, and really go through several different types of herbs to find something that works for me. 
And we are now to the point where I am, once again, decreasing my um, prednisone intake and I am headed in the right direction again. So anyway, that was a totally different rabbit trail. Not what I'm talking about, but uh, on those kinds of heavy medications, you have to watch your liver. This is a really pretty one. You have to watch your liver and your kidneys. And I am proud to say that my liver labs are completely and totally normal and have not shot up once because I am very diligent about um, taking certain herbal protocols when I have certain symptoms or if my blood work shows something that is not ideal. So milk thistle is uh, a big, a big one for me. So I prefer to take milk thistle. I do take it in a tea. I have a tea blend that I'll talk about in another video that I do enjoy. It's really tasty and it is very helpful. But if I, if I end up having any kind of symptoms of liver problems, uh, if my labs show anything off, tincture is very potent and this it would be my go-to. So I just wanna have this on hand. And also, like I said, I'm making a specific digestive tincture blend for our family. So I want to, um, I wanna blend that together when we get to that point. And when we get to that point, I will make another video on that. So, so a couple other things I wanna talk about with milk thistle is it helps to heal a lot of different liver and gallbladder, gallbladder conditions and it helps with the flow of bile. A lot of the time you may not, you may be having um, like liver gallbladder kind of issues like gallbladder attacks. If you've had a gallbladder attack, they are the absolute worst. I unfortunately no longer have my gallbladder and had I known about everything that I know now 13 years ago, I would still have my gallbladder. But a lot of the times it's not gallstones. Now I had a ton of them. My doctor's exact words were, if gallstones were diamonds, you could retire. <laughs> I have one member of our family that has gallbladder congestion, but it's nothing that is showing on lab work. It's just all of the symptoms. And they did show on a scan that he has what they call sludge in his gallbladder. So when it was repeated uh, a year later, that was gone. So part of it is natural healing and it takes time. Part of it is serious diet changes. And another part of it is herbal remedies helping to support the system to flow and work correctly as it is designed to. But even though he does not have those same symptoms anymore and they're not as nearly as extreme as they used to be, I mean, it was, it, it was awful. It was really like life-changing, life debilitating at times. So even though we are not at that point anymore, I still make sure that we keep these herbs in his system and keep the protocol going because uh, it just helps his whole digestive tract to function at its optimal level. And we do notice that if he is not on his herbal protocol and he is not following the diet and he is not doing the things that he should be doing to keep everything working optimally, uh, as soon as we start him again, it like clears up like that. So within a week, he is feeling way better. So we just keep it going as kind of a daily, um, a daily routine, a daily protocol. Another little side note, milk thistle helps with breast milk production. Uh, fenugreek I know is a very popular herb for lactating mothers. I had wild success with fenugreek when I was still nursing um, my last two kids. But milk thistle, if you don't like fenugreek or if you don't have great reactions to it, you may wanna try some milk thistle. You can try it in a tea, you can try it in a tincture. Um, either way is good, uh, but that might be another option for you to try. Okay, so let's move on to dandelion root. So you can use all parts of the dandelion, I'm sure you know. Dandelion is super nutritious. I am sure you know all about dandelion and how wonderful it is. It's a very nutritive herb. It has so many different vitamins and minerals in it. It is so helpful to so many different parts of the body, but we're gonna talk specifically about digestion today. So this is gentle enough to use as what we call a tonic. And a tonic herb is an herb that can be used on a daily basis. It is not gonna hurt you, it is super, super gentle. You can eat it, eat the greens, saute those suckers up, eat them fresh in a salad. You can have the roots, you can do any part of this dandelion you can take on a daily basis with no side effects, unless you have a personal allergy or sensitivity to it. Everybody is different, everybody reacts to things differently. So anytime you are going to be uh, starting a new herbal protocol, do so with caution. Check with your doctor if need be, especially if you have any underlying things and do your own research with good quality. I mean, I'd say Google it, but there's so much misinformation on Google. Have a few good herbal books or a good herbal person to go to to ask. 
Uh, you wanna make sure that your information is reliable and that you're getting safe information, especially when it comes to if you have any underlying conditions or you're on any medications. A good herb book to start with, with medicine making is, this one is probably my favorite for beginner medicine makers, uh, the Modern Herbal Dispensatory. There's also another really good one. I made a video on this, I'll put that one down below, my favorite herbal books for um, beginners. And really intermediates and advanced too, there's some really good books like the Medical Herbalism book. That's a fabulous one. Prescription for Nutritional Healing, there's Prescription for Herbal Healing. There's some really great books in there. So I'll put the links for all those in the description box. But dandelion root, really good, all parts of the dandelion, but we're talking root here, uh, is really good for helping the liver, the gallbladder, like we just talked about with the milk thistle, but helping it work the way it should, helping regulate the function of it and your intestines also. If you are someone that's struggling with any kind of chronic conditions like um, jaundice, ulcers, or inflammatory conditions like uh, acute conditions like gastritis, things like that, this would be an excellent tincture to take too. You can totally do dandelion root in a tea, but because it's a root, remember you wanna use a decoction. A decoction is a tea. It's just a tea that requires a long brew at a higher temperature. So you need to kind of start with boiling water, throw your herb in, lower it to a simmer, and let it cook for 20 to 40 minutes. The thicker the root, the longer I let it boil. So if it's like a coarse cut like this, I would let this go for 40 minutes on a simmer and then I strain it and I can mix it with the rest of my tea blend that I just, you know, brew normally. And that's how you wanna have a root tea. So you wanna get all the property. You need that because it, it pulls out all the properties better that way. If you just do it as an infusion, yeah, you'd get some of the properties, but you wouldn't get it the way you would if you did a decoction for a root berry mushroom, things like that. So now we have all of our tinctures here. So let's talk about how long this is gonna sit. I'm gonna put these over on my apothecary shelves and those are gonna sit these three, because they are leafy, well, this is a seed. So I will probably give this an extra week more than this one, but not as long as this one. So these are gonna sit for four to five weeks. This is gonna sit six-ish weeks. And this is gonna sit for eight weeks. So when you, I just can't stop shaking these. When you are doing uh, these kinds of roots, berries, twigs, things like that, mushrooms, those really dense things, even an herb like Spilanthes, which is really dense, a kind of dense, big blossom, uh, even red clover, if you don't chop it up, it up, if you leave it whole, you wanna leave those in longer because they're bigger, thicker, denser. It's gonna take longer for everything to penetrate in and to pull all those properties out. So like I said, I'm gonna put these over on my apothecary shelves. We get, we have like big windows over here. So it does get sunlight, but it doesn't get direct light and it's not sitting in the heat. It's temperature controlled. And I find that they tincture really well. And I put a curtain rod up there I'm just looking over there, I'm not showing you, but I put a curtain rod up there and I could put a curtain on there, but I found that in any time of the day, there is not direct sunlight shining right on it. And it's very temperature controlled in here. So I don't have to worry about it being excessively hot uh, and the light getting directly to it. Very important that these sit in a cooler, dark place for the duration of their tincturing process. And then also when you're done, you wanna make sure that you are storing them the same way. And because they're alcohol, they last indefinitely. Uh, but, you know, certain organizations like us to say that they only last a year to two. It's alcohol. Use your judgment. So when all of these are done tincturing, I am going to come back and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna strain these and how I'm gonna make my blends and we will go from there. So I hope you found this helpful in making, making your tinctures. It is a super, super simple process. You just wanna make sure you have accurate resources, spending a little money on the books. I mean, check thrift books, check eBay. They're really not that expensive. Amazon, Prime Days is coming up, you might have, um, some discounts on there that would work for these books, but I find them on sale all the time. There are some books like the Medical Herbalism book, that one is pricier. I've seen that go up uh, upwards of $80, but I've also seen it for 40. It just depends on where you get it and when the sales pop up. But I highly recommend having good quality herbal books, we call them herbals, so that you have reliable, safe, at your fingertip information. Don't just rely on hopping on YouTube, which I'm always glad to see you, but don't just rely on hopping on YouTube or Google because I can't tell you how much misinformation there is on Google. The other day I was lazy <laughs> and I didn't want to get up to go get one of my herbal books, but I couldn't for the life of me remember something. I can't remember what it was now, but I couldn't remember it. So I Google it and I'm like, no, that is wrong. So wrong. I can't remember what it was. 
but it was so wildly wrong, wildly inaccurate. I'm like, I am never doing that again. So always make sure you have good quality information. I cannot stress that enough. And again, if you are interested in furthering your herbal gut health education, I have a wonderful course and I will link that down in the description box. I started with the gut because I felt like it was the most important first step. You have to have good gut regulation. Everything has to be flowing right for everything else to work. If you have gut issues, other things are going to fall apart. So if you have any other questions about that or anything else we talked today, don't forget to leave them in the comments section. If you like this content and you want to see more of it, I want to invite you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can stay up to date with all the videos I put out and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.